Ooh, right at 130 days. Hey everybody, it's Henry Steele and today is May 12th, 2022 and it's been quite a while since I've uploaded a video to my YouTube channel. Somewhere in the neighborhood of 130, 133 days or so, somewhere around there. And speaking of channel, what I want to talk about in this particular video is channels here on the price chart, right? Now we all know how to draw a channel, or at least I assume we do. I'll use the all-time high here. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average one-day chart. Of course, it's on TradingView. So we're going to take this line. We're going to go to the all-time high right here, and then we're going to use this secondary low that came right after it about a week, week and a half later, something like that. This is a low back in January of this year. I'm sorry, the high back in January of this year. And so let's clone this line right here and we'll create the channel on the price chart by lining this line up with this low that happens in between right here. And so let's look what happens here. We see the price moves down, breaks out of the channel, comes back into the channel, pops out right there, breaks out a little bit right here, stays in, then breaks out and has not returned to the channel as of the recording of this video. Now what's really interesting is paying attention to how much time the market spends inside the channel and outside of the channel can be helpful for future predictions of things like returning to the channel or changes in trends, things of that nature. So if we look here, the market is inside the channel until it breaks out right here, comes back in intraday right here, but eventually closes, this particular candle for this day closes just outside of the channel line right there. So this day right here is the first breakout, but most of the price action, or I should say more of the price action, is within the channel. So I'm not going to count that particular line, but I'm going to count from here to here, because even though this one's back in, the top of this candle is slightly inside the line, the majority of it is outside. So we have six bars eight days that the market spends outside of the particular of this particular channel that we just drew so if we count from when the market comes back inside the line six bars or eight days we get the point in time where it breaks out of the channel again right here and it's a day off of the top right here the secondary top which is actually slightly higher than this top right here, before it moves back into the channel right there. And likewise, we can count how long it's in the channel. Look up here, it starts right here, and we'll count that one because most of it's inside. So that's 15 bars. So if we count 15 bars, or 15 candles, starting from here we're gonna wind up pretty close to the same spot right there so we have right here is the 15th one so we're at the top right there moving back in so it gives us about the same point in time right there now if we start counting 15 from right here let's watch what we get starting from right here 15 bars right there and now we're about to break out of the channel again granted it was just for you know a day and a half essentially but it leaves the channel at this point in time um, let's move this line way down here to this significant low or more significant low that happened before this top right here now obviously this is a larger channel and that means there's more of the price chart or the price charts total area within the channel so of course there's much more likelihood that the price action is going to remain within the channel so nothing particularly special right there so to speak but if we look at this here let's get the timing the total amount of time spent in this channel right here would be right about there so that's 42 bars right there and if we count from when it comes back into the channel this one's it's about halfway so let's just count this one we'll go 42 bars into the future 
41, 42. We're at a point in time where we get a change in trend and the market moves back up to this high level, this high price level right here. In other words, we move away from the channel right there. If we take our 42 bars and count from when it first breaches the channel, not reaches, but breaches, and count 42 bars right here, it doesn't hit anything specific, but if we count from the first candle that's outside, definitely outside, which is right here, count 42 from right there, 41, 42. We again get this low area right here before the market moves up. Now let's see here. Okay, so if I once again move this channel line over here, we're gonna get a lot more going in here and uh, there's a lot of different undulations that are not fitting the channel properly, right? Like when we drew this line, I'll get this over here, drew this line right here, and you know, we had a bottom that came close to it. But down here, we're just, it's not what we would consider a usable channel line for this case, because there's a lot of price action that's not coming anywhere near the channel line right here within it. And they're big moves in the actual market. So that channel is just too big. So let's go to, let's see, let's use this low right here and go to this higher low right there and then clone the line. And then there's the highest point right there. So we have this price action that rides the channel, the top channel line right there. If we determine how long that was going on, we come to nine bars right there. And if we count nine bars from the first candle that's completely inside, seven, eight, nine, we get one candle past this low right here. The market moves up to the channel line. So in other words, if we counted this right here and started our nine count from here, we land right there. Interesting. Now let's count how long the price was in it. Mm, I guess we'll go that far. 18 bars, 18 candles. Double that at this point. There's our 18 right there. It gives us that same point right there. If we count 18 from when we break back in, we get a low right here that's away from our channel and then the market moves back to the channel line right there and comes away. And then one last thing that we can look at right here is how long the price is in the channel right here. It's 15 or 16 bars. So let's go with 15 and then do 15 later. 12, 13, 14, so 15. 15 is gonna be tomorrow's day or May 13th, Friday the 13th. And at that point, since we're away from this channel, do we start moving back up toward the channel line at this point? Good question, right? So anyway, I just wanted to record this particular video because I've actually been thinking about it for a bit and I wanted to show you that you can anticipate what the market may do in relation to a channel that's drawn pretty decently. And by pretty decently, I mean you find a decent bottom or a decent top that has, if we're moving up, we have a higher bottom right there so we can create a channel to the upside. If we're moving down, obviously a lower high kind of a thing. And then base your other channel line on swings that happened either before or after in between these two points or before it right there so anyway thought that this would be a little food for thought for everybody out there so i hope you enjoyed the video I'll give you something to think about over the next few weeks or so and until next time this is henry Steele, and i will talk to you later